Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jenna. Welcome back to my game engine series. So last time we took a look at GitHub and Hazel and how all of that kind of worked. Definitely check out that video if you haven't already because today we're actually going to be continuing on with the whole GitHub thing and taking a look at pull requests. And apart from just taking a look at them and integrating some of them today, we're also going to kind of discuss how in the future you should collaborate via pull requests. So I think um, this is like a really useful topic for everyone. Um, it's also going to be very useful outside of Hazel because if you're working with GitHub, if you're working with kind of teams um, of people and you're using Git, um, and in fact, it doesn't really matter what version control system you're really using, um, pull requests and just that whole notion of uh, being able to kind of, you know, create code as a team and then merge it together and all of that and, you know, break off into your own feature branches or bug fix branches or anything like, anything like that, really vital for software engineering in general. Um, I tend to make a lot of videos on the technicalities of actually writing code, but then I realize that a lot of people ask me, well, how does this work if I'm in a team, right? If I'm in a team of people and we're all working on the, on the same thing, how does this work? Because all of my videos, I'm kind of the only one really working on them. Um, and so because of that, I don't, and, and because I'm teaching you guys like a specific thing, I'm not spending too much time being like, well, if this was more in a team environment, then we should do this or that. So I want to spend a little bit of time kind of talking about that today as well. Um, but hopefully we can just kind of, uh, sort through these pull requests. We have seven open pull requests, um, as of right now. Uh, don't forget that the repository for Hazel is in the description of every video. Definitely check that out. If you have code that you want to change, or if you notice that I make a mistake and you want to fix it, or you want to go ahead and just add something, um, that you think is useful, then definitely open a pull request or an issue, uh, because at the very least we'll discuss this and the community will discuss this with you. And then that way you can kind of get to grips with, um, with just, uh, you know, the whole software engineering workflow and how we can build this project together. So I'm really excited for all that. Let's take a look at pull requests. So we have, um, seven pull requests. This is the Hazel repository, of course, is what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> readme wise, I'm going to add a readme very, very soon. And this will have information on how to open pull requests because those are, those, those, those are really things that you want to have. Um, why do we have two branches? What's this? It's the first time I'm noticing this, to be honest. I have no idea what that is. 9th of December. Anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> so we have, uh, we have this readme file here, which will contain information on things like how to build Hazel and how to uh, submit pull requests and how to submit issues and just information about general collaboration. So that is usually a place in GitHub where you would put such information. I haven't done that yet, but I will. Um, but for now you can see that we have, yeah, six issues, uh, and a bunch of pull requests. And, um, some of these you can see are just coming in pretty, um, frequently. And usually I will kind of read these offline because obviously, you know, every week we get more and more of these and I can't make an episode every week, at least not at this point. Um, where I kind of just go through everything. Uh, if that's something that you guys want to see at some point, like I, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to happen every week, but maybe every month or every two weeks or something like that. If you guys just want me to make a video where I'm like, okay, let's just filter through all these issues and pull requests, then I can probably do that. Uh, but, but, but in general, I just, you know, when I'm just on the train or something and I have a spare moment, I'll look at this on my phone and just reply and just, you know, kind of, kind of keep that discussion going. So that's how I kind of handle this stuff right now, because obviously I don't really have the time to sit down at a computer and do all this stuff because my life is just hectic. Anyway, so pull requests. Um, this is what we're looking at today. So let's start from the beginning. We've actually got six of them closed already. I, I believe I like, even for this one, use unique pointers instead of raw pointers. Yeah. Like you can see that I responded to this, um, Two thumbs down. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> I responded to this quite a while ago, actually. Um, and I even gave some examples and I, you know, gave some reasoning as to why I decided to do what I did a certain way. Um, so, you know, you know, this is like a pull request that, um, actually doesn't even seem to do anything. Oh, okay. So it does, I don't know why the file changes zero, but maybe that branch has been closed already. It doesn't matter. The point is, um, this is kind of the spirit of pull requests, right? Like, you know, you know, done this and that, um, obviously could have opened an issue instead and asked if this was reasonable to do, or if that's the direction we're going in, but this is also fine. I don't mind, um, doing something like this. And then you can see that, um, people just jump in and we have a discussion going. And then if I, um, you know, don't like something or if I want to discuss it further, then I will kind of, you know, do this. And I mean, I even like link to the CPP reference and stuff in certain cases. So it's kind of a good example. It's kind of a good, 
um, kind of, I guess, lesson for everyone. Uh, not, not necessarily like lesson, like I'm not trying to be like my way is the correct way. It's more a lesson in terms of like some uh, aspects of this that people might not have thought about. It's educational for everyone to kind of just jump into this discussion and participate. So I like it when people do that a lot. You can see six different people participate in this one specifically. Um, and then I, I didn't even close, you know, the pull request. So it's not like I'm just like, bam, done, that's it, closed. No, the original poster closed the pull request once I guess they were satisfied that that's fine. So um, again, this is really good for those of you who, for those of you who actually wanna learn how to be on a team and write an engine and all of that, instead of just watching the videos and copying down the code and trying to do everything yourself, jump into this, seriously. It's really cool, it's solid, um, it's going to give you much more of a team kind of experience and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm here to just help you guys out. And, and again, there's going to be so many cases of you guys being like, Hey, Cherno, you're completely wrong in this. This is the right way to do it. Or this is a better way to do it. And I'll be like, Oh man, like, thank you so much for showing me. I'm not going to be like, Oh, how dare you? Like the worst thing about this software engineering community, this kind of programming community, a lot of the times is the people just get very, very like superior and just refuse to listen to everyone else and think everyone's beneath them. I'm definitely not one of those people. I hate those people to be honest and I wish that they would be better. But the point is this is like a safe space. Like, I mean, I'm going to learn a lot throughout this series. So you guys, let's build this thing together in a nice friendly environment. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, that was just kind of an example of what we can kind of do. So, uh, or, or like how pull requests in general are done. So anyway, add CMAKE support to the project. This one's huge. I don't know if I'll, <laughs> if I'll tend to this one today because it's got seven, 17 participants. Um, and I did, I think, I think I did reply to this at some point. Um, well, even Gaston, who's a, an administrator on my Discord, um, replied to this um, and said that I'm using pre-make instead of CMake. Um, and it's kind of redundant and there's a lot of other stuff here, um, but you can see this hasn't been closed yet. So yeah, and there's stuff from like even four days ago and um, you know, he used pre-make and blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure about this. I might, uh, I'll keep that open for now. And it was the very first issue as well, which is or the very first pull request, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look at that. Okay, add Linux support to the project. That's quite, um, ambitious, I guess. I'm not sure how up to date this is. Um, you can see it's got conflicts, which means it's not up to date. Um, but so add a support for Linux, pre-make file, change, blah, 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 to fix the compiler error. Um, yeah, I mean like I'm obviously I'm happy for like, uh, this to be, I'm not sure why it's the same, because the same for both platforms, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So like certain, okay, sure. Um, can you please update this branch and make sure it's ready to merge? I'd, I'd be keen to merge this in. And I'll even add a smiley face. That's very, is there a slightly smiley face? Yes. I don't want to be like full on happy yet, but I'll just, yeah. Um, Okay, done. See, so like this is, you know, let's, let's do this. Um, okay, replace compiler flags with pre-make properties. So I updated the pre-make file with properties for the runtime library, yes. So I think I've already done that, I believe. Um, so, because I think the thing here was that, yeah, back when we used MDD and all of that stuff, I believe that right now, um, if we look at the pre-make file, I believe we're not doing that anymore, right? Um, yeah, so we're doing runtime and we're not doing like, you know, slash MDD or anything like that. Um, the reason I had to check, by the way, is not because I'm that stupid that I can't remember um, what we did and what we didn't. It's just sometimes, like, I mean, I have a Hazel development branch that's access like accessible to patrons um, where I do a lot of this kind of development stuff. And sometimes I don't remember what I've done kind of for that development branch or the stuff that I've actually done live in a video. So that's why sometimes I just need to double check. Okay, anyway, um, so... This, this has been done recently. I don't know. I'll just say obsolete. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay, cool. 
So there we go. Uh, start project. Now I think this is something that I want to do. Um, where was that pre-make file? Cause we don't have a start project. I know that there's a pre-make flag for that. Um, it's called start project. So, uh, that looks really good. Add a start project. Let's thumbs that up. Um, it's not possible blah, 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 to make it universal. No, not really. I don't really find that. I don't, I don't see that exactly. This is good. See, look at this. Look at this discussion. People are having a nice discussion about maybe making this one line of code better. Like that's fantastic. So, um, really good. Obviously in this case, we don't need to do that. Um, and we can't even do that because, uh, you know, it's pretty clear anyway to just make sandbox a startup project. I'm happy with that. I'm going to merge this in right now. So merge pull request, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't like the, this is the title of the, of the merge, isn't it? I'm sure I like this that much, but yeah, I guess GitHub just likes doing it that way. So we'll just merge that in. Okay. That's now merged. If you go to the code in GitHub, you can see that my latest commit was a merge pull request, um, 22 seconds ago. If we look at the commits here as well, you can see that, um, there's that commit. So now this person is also a contributor to Hazel, which is really cool. Um, and also we get the, you know, we get this code done. So I can now kind of pull that, um, verified. Okay. Whatever. I don't know what that even means, but anyway, I can now obviously pull the changes into my local repository and I will have that there. So I might even show you guys how to do that. So, um, just in case you're unaware. So all I need to do now is just pull. I don't know if I've got any kind of stuff. I probably do have untracked stuff. I don't know why I do actually. Um, ah, oh, this is just, uh, did I not commit this? Maybe I didn't commit this. Oh, I must not have committed this. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, sometimes I forget to commit code as well. I really need to put a post-it note on my monitor so that I can commit stuff, but let's just commit that stuff now. So what do we need? Um, that and that. I think that's it, right? What else is left? Uh, don't need that, okay. Well, I mean, we might as well commit this actually. Um, so what do we do? Um, we added, what was that? In core.h we had, so, um, if, if debug is on, And I might actually, the first thing I might write for the message is what we did regarding, um, the static library. So, um, we now link the dynamic library instead of, well, I like to get my commit messages pretty accurate. So you'll see this live. Um, it's, it's just called the runtime library, isn't it? Yeah. Multi-thread debug DLL. Now linking runtime library dynamically and define that. Okay. Get, get push. Well, we also need to pull. I wish I pulled first, but it doesn't matter. We've committed it. This should be an easy match. Um, and then we can also push. So I'm just going to get that done. So cool, you guys are seeing me do some stuff live here, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, now that that's done, uh, if we refresh this repository, we should see uh, this, and it probably had to merge. Yeah, it did, a little, it did a little merge because I ended up committing before I pulled the latest merge that we did. So that was a little bit of fun there. But anyway, that's done now. Cool, that's closed, obviously. Next one, dependencies in a solution folder. I grouped all the dependencies together in a solution folder for less cluttering. That's awesome. I was actually wondering for a long time how to do that. I guess you just put it into a group. Um, yeah, I really like that. Um, I'll, I'll definitely be using groups more often, but in general, this is good. So this is just um, adding a new line at the end of the file. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that, it's pretty good. I like that. So I'm going to merge that. Um, no, I can't. Okay, cool. Um, I can't because I just updated premake the premake file myself. Uh, okay. Fixed build failing first time. 
Um, now we'll first check if fault exists. Doesn't exist. We'll create fault. Okay, cool. Actually, if not exist, yeah, that's good. That's a good idea. Um, there was also another one I think which was related to that. I'm not sure which one's better. There's post build command for Hazel project modified. This will ensure that X copy will know that the argument two is a folder, not a file. So I'm not sure. But this it was referenced. So I'm not sure why. Like, why was this ref? Like, he referenced this, right? So, what does that mean exactly? Oh, that's a different one. Sorry, that's number nine. This is 21. Oh, okay, so there's been a few. Um, I mean, this, what does this do? This, this just splits it up so that this is, instead of one argument, it's two. But I'm not sure if that, like, does that fix it? Okay, let's, let's quickly repro this. Um... So we have, so the, the idea is we can delete bin, um, and then if we try and build sandbox, it will fail the first time because the folder doesn't, doesn't exist yet. So let's see if we can actually fix this right now. Um, because yeah, that's really annoying. I agree. Okay. So there it is. It's failed over here. Um, I hate all of this, all of these warnings. We really need to suppress them or something like that. Um, because I think that I think that they're fine. I think that they just need to be suppressed. But anyway, um, okay, so where's the error? There it is. So command blah, 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 failed. So let's try, let's try do this instead. So I'm just gonna copy this um, and then go to the pre-make file. And there it is. Paste this in instead. Um, and then we need to, what do we need to do? We need to go back here, we need to delete bin. Um, we need to regenerate the projects. Unable to set style project project scope should be in workspace. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I shouldn't have merged then. Um, start project sandbox. Why was that a failure? Okay, this brings me to another point. Obviously, ideally, you should definitely test the pull requests before you actually merge them in. Um, I have a feeling that because this was automatically merged it, so it was done before Hazel start project sandbox. That's interesting. I'm not sure. Maybe it needs to be done after, but I'm not sure. I mean, obviously like I imagine that this guy tested it. Um, but we can, uh, let's just run that again. Unable to set start project in project scope should be in work. Oh, okay. So it's in a project scope. Ah, oh, it's probably because we've included this stuff. Okay, cool. So this needs to be done um, in the workspace scope. So maybe I'll do it up here. Um, so let's try this again. Okay, there we go. So we'll move it there. Um, that makes sense because you immediately see the startup project and the architecture, everything's fine. Uh, okay, cool. So now that we've done that, we'll make sure that, okay, so there's no bin folder. Let's try and build sandbox and let's see if it fails again. I'm not sure if it will. Oh, it didn't. Really? That built very quickly though. Let's delete this and let's try again. I don't, I don't buy it. Okay, there we go. That succeeded. Okay, cool. So splitting up the file was really the solution. Um, the reason I like that better, so okay, that's brilliant. So the reason I, I like this a lot better than the other one, like, cause this, this is more code, right? So this has to do more. It has to do an if not exist, blah, blah, blah. Um, but this is like, it's this. It's literally just like a couple extra characters, just splitting up the path into the um, folder and the actual like into the directory and the file, which is really good. Instead of having like one big path, so I'm really happy with that. Um, I think that's a lot better. Um, actually, I don't even know. Like, so that's the first argument. Then we have the relative path where we're copying from, I guess. From and then we're into sandbox. I don't know. Anyway, but the point is splitting it up into into two arguments. That seems to fix it. I really like this fix. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to do my classic please update this so I can merge it because I could commit it myself but I kind of want to give this guy credit for doing it um, because uh, yeah this was an issue that's been bothering me for ages so we'll give him a chance to fix it we'll give him like a couple days um, to update it. And then also one thing I want to do is, um, this, 
Uh, I will say that, um, so, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So this is the one that, um, solution implementation of issue number nine. Um, how do I reference another issue? Ah, here we go. Okay. I hope that links properly. It should. I don't know if it wants to space there, but whatever. Okay, cool. So close and comment. Um, and then that's obviously I reference this and okay, cool. So there we go. That's everything done. Um, I'm really glad we did that because we fixed up the startup project. We fixed that folder thing copying. Um, and what else did we do? I think that was about it. But anyway, I kind of took you guys through the whole workflow. So now that we have, we, we pretty much addressed everything. This is kind of an ongoing discussion that I think I'll close eventually because CMake, I don't think, I'm still not sure if CMake support should ever be a thing in Hazel just because pre-make exists. And also pre-make, I think can generate CMake files anyway. So I know pre-make is just a thousand times better than CMake in my opinion anyway. Um, Linux support, again, I'd be happy to kind of make sure that works, but I want to probably test that on a Linux VM or something first. Um, and then everything else we've addressed. So that's all the pull requests. Um, hope that kind of makes sense. As far as opening pull requests, really easy. All you have to do is kind of fork Hazel, right? So you can fork it into your own kind of, um, into your own account. And then once you've done that, uh, you can, you can do what you want in a branch or just in your master in kind of your a copy of the repository. And then once you, once you have done that, you can just go to pull request, new pull request. Um, and then you can merge, you know, your copy into my copy, right? And that's it. And this will show you all the diffs, um, and everything will be, uh, you know, botticherno as one might say, um, <laughs> really smooth is the idea. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. You guys won't get that joke, but the point is, um, you can kind of create that, merge that in, and you can see that's kind of how it works. Um, I will, once I do update that readme file, I will have more or less like a better kind of, like a format for like how you should structure your messages and what information you should provide here. Because right now it's kind of just like, you know, write whatever, but I would like that to be more structured in the future. But yeah, that's about it. Hope that made sense. All right, so that is pull requests in GitHub. You can see how helpful that is and how we can kind of just, for now it's really like small changes, small fixes, because there isn't too much to Hazel to begin with. But once we have, you know, massive, massive like amount of code and our code base is just huge, there'll be so many things here and there that people can improve and fix and implement as well. Um, so pull requests obviously going into the future, if we can kind of start ramping that up, like as it is right now, that's perfect. We can establish it. We can make sure that people are comfortable with that because in the future, that's going to be really important. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can also help support the series by going over to patreon.com forward slash the churno. Huge thank you as always to all the patrons that make this series possible. If you guys support there, you'll get videos a week early, um, as well as access to that private Hazel development repository where you can see like all the code that I've done. Um, which is far more ahead of this kind of repository. So that's really cool. And a little kind of thank you for helping to support this series. Um, next time, I think we're going to probably move on with actual Hazel development. One thing that I wanted to do for a while is like input and key codes and stuff like that. So we can kind of do that. Um, yeah, we'll probably end up doing that, I think. So until next time, goodbye.